Terry Busen. I'm a wife, I'm the mother of seven, the grandmother of five, and I'm the founder of Orphan's Promise. I had a mom who was very, very caring of other people. She knew there were children in our, in my class specifically that I remember who came from very poor families in the country and she would send in bags of clothes that we were no longer wearing and she would say to me, give this to the teacher for this child, but don't say anything to the child about it. At the time, I don't think I had the big picture of all of that, but you know, one of the things that it really stirred inside of me was that there were children who didn't have what I had. I had this feeling that I needed to to do something that mattered. In 1973, I was Miss America, and that was an amazing door opener. I got to a certain place. I certainly wasn't um, a star or anything like that, but I got to a place where I realized I was on my way to a top, the top of a mountain that didn't have anything at the top of the mountain. <laughs> When Andy and I married, we were in our early 30s, and I honestly thought I was never going to have children. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> so we gave birth to Drew, and then we thought, well, you know, we wanted to adopt. We applied for adoption for a little boy, and it, it fell through last minute. And so by that time, I was pregnant with Tori. <laughs> And so we decided we better wait until she's one and then we'll try this process again. And so we did that and applied um, to adopt a little boy from Korea and JP joined our family just before Tori turned two. And then a couple of years later, a friend contacted us. A young girl had become pregnant and knew that she wasn't in a position to raise her child and was looking for a family to adopt. Her baby was biracial, and we were super excited about that because we really believed that God created us all to be unique and enjoyed in our uniqueness. My husband used to say that he thought there was a conspiracy in the dining room table business because every table came with six chairs. <laughs> so we, we felt like we finally met the, the criteria. We had six people at our table. I was working on a show at the Christian Broadcasting Network and we had a general interest story that the producer, executive producer had booked. It was a friend of hers. She and her husband were going to Ukraine to adopt an older child. And we said, when you get your child, come on back. We'd like to meet her. We'd like to hear how the whole process went. And so when they came back with the little girl, we had our production meeting ahead of the show. And I said to the executive producer, I'm dying to hear what this woman has to say about how this works. I mean, how do you go get an older child? Do, do they line them up along the wall and you say, I'll take number 15? Or, I mean, how does that work? I just couldn't even imagine such a thing. When they got there, the orphanage director said, I have three sisters I'd like you to look at. And they said, three, we came for one. And we only have the ability to take two. So the orphanage director excused herself for a moment and came back and said, well, the oldest sister said she'll stay behind so her younger sisters can have a family. And I'm thinking to myself, what kind of a child does that? I mean, who says I'll stay behind so my sisters can have a family? The mother heart in me at this point is like totally stunned. And we meet the lady, they didn't take the two girls. They said, we came for one, we're taking one. So we met the little girl, we met her family. But I couldn't get these three kids out of my mind. And so I started to pray that God would send a family to get them, not my family, a family to go get them. I just got this strange stirring feeling inside of me and I thought, no, that can't be right. This has to be a hormonal moment. And so I, I started thinking, God, could it be possible that you're asking us to go get these girls? Well, I had told my husband the story of the three girls two weeks before. We're driving somewhere and I said, I have something I need to ask you and I just need you to not interrupt me till I get to the end of this. So I tell him the whole thing and just said, I think we're supposed to go get these girls. And I look over and he's just kind of smiling as he's driving and he said, I knew you were going to ask me that two weeks ago when you told me this story. He said to me, you know what, I think we just pursue this. If God is in it, the lights will be green and the doors will open. And so uh, one night we sat down as a family shortly thereafter and we talked to them about the three girls and their need. The room got very quiet when we said, we think we're supposed to go adopt these girls and make them part of our family. 
You know, none of us understood the challenges that would be a part of this. My daughter cried, and yet, um, because she and I had very tight relationships, she was the only girl, and so bringing in three sisters was going to change her life the most. And yet she said to me at the time, I know that my tears are selfish tears, and so just let me cry and go get them. Well, we were in Ukraine for um, almost a month, and so every day, our routine was we would get up and have breakfast, go to the orphanage, spend the day with the girls. As we got in the van and we were driving away, of course all the kids come to say goodbye to their friends and they're getting in a car and I look back and I see all these little noses pressed up against windows. And I know that what they're saying is, when is somebody coming for me? In the process of all of that, um, I came to understand some statistics. Less than 1% of them were going to get adopted. And, you know, you just wind up saying, so what happens to all of those kids? And so we started talking about doing uh, school of life, and it would be English classes, computer classes, everything from how do I cook my own meals? How do I iron a shirt? How do I save money? And who is God? Who am I and who is God to me? We just felt like if we could help kids get a handle on life in that way, that we could help them move forward. And so that's what we began to pursue and we did it in Kiev first. And then we went right down to Berdansk where our girls are from and we opened a center there so that their friends who weren't going to be adopted could come to this place before they even aged out on their free time and then when they aged out could find a place and it was the beginning of Orphan's Promise. Over the next 15 years, Orphan's Promise grew to 61 countries, having a daily impact on over 100,000 children. Though the reach of Orphan's Promise has grown, the desire to take each child from surviving to thriving stays the same. Well, Ashley and I are thrilled to have our dear friend and colleague, although I could never put myself in your class, Terry, but Terry oh, Muser joins us we now. Are we are honored. <laughs> we are honored we're to here. be talking to you today, Terry. Oh, thank you for inviting no, me. Of course, of course for inviting you back. You were on this program <laughs> quite, quite a long time. <laughs> Just, <laughs> you, haven't, you haven't missed a beat. So 15 years for Orphan's Promise. Wow. 15 years. I mean, does it seem that long looking back? No, it really does not until I think about all the things that God has done and how he's grown things um, far beyond anything I ever could have imagined. But, you know, the thing is, I never imagined Orphan's mm. Promise. I mean, it wasn't something I, I had in my heart or my mind. It yeah. really evolved out of having said yes first mm -hmm. to the girls. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then, and uh, so I learned something from that, that out of our obedience, God wow. does things that we would never have thought of, you know? Yeah. And so it's important to say yes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, yeah. that piece literally brought tears to my <laughs> eyes. It really did because you really see your heart in it and you see the yes. I'm getting emotional just talking about it again. But what have been some of the hardest challenges with Orphan's oh, Promise? Well, you know, in the beginning, I said to everyone, if you, if you have a free bed in your house, a bedroom that's not occupied, go adopt. I don't say that anymore because um, it's a, it's a, kids who come from hard places have wounds that are deep. Yeah. And, you know, if you are going to adopt, if God's placed that on your heart, then do your homework. Understand yeah. how to walk through the minefields of that. Because even when a child finds the Lord, you know, there are certain things that can happen and like that can trigger stuff. Mm -hmm. And we didn't know all of that. Um, yeah. But God sustained us. If you, Also, sometimes people go expecting children to come back and be grateful and happy to have a family. And, you know, they're stuck in with an orphan spirit, mm. a feeling of rejection, a feeling of being less than, yeah. the loss of a family. You know, it took a long time for me to understand my girls gave up everything. Yeah. And we just expected them to come and say, oh, thank you. It's good mm -hmm. to be in America. It's wonderful to have a family. Now, we have a great family today but it was a journey to get there and yeah. and yet 
you know, even in those hard places in life, God's refining us. So say yes to the refining too. <laughs> so that's a whole Amen. part of parenting you hadn't really experienced before. I mean, this is this is no, a whole different set of challenges. My boys were adopted. My two younger sons were adopted, but as children, as infants, yeah. you know, they were they were little, so they they didn't ever know anything mm -hmm. else. Even then, even then, that whole thing of understanding, how could they let me go? How mm -hmm. could they give me up? Still came to roost at times yeah. in both of them. And you know, I, I was always one who said, oh, love is enough. Love is not enough. Mm -hmm. It's not enough. You have to have wisdom and knowledge and understanding and counsel, all of yeah. that. So yeah. how has this affected your faith walk? I mean, yeah. has it brought out certain dynamics that have you've grown in ways you didn't anticipate oh or struggled in ways you didn't anticipate? All of the yeah. above. <laughs> All yeah. of the above, but in a good way. You know, it, I, I really have come to realize how much we are on a journey from here to where we're going to spend eternity, and we get to do this once. And so, uh, you know, it's, has, it has made me not want to miss one moment of what God is teaching me, showing me, walking me through, because, I mean, there were times where I thought, will my family ever be the same again? Wow. You know, just trying to merge an yeah. existing family with three mm -hmm. kids who really didn't know what family was and who'd experienced great loss. Yeah. So, yeah, it was very, it changed my faith walk. I, I know that I need God 24-7, <laughs> 365. And it's caused me in helping my girls to grow through their pain to realize um, we all come through hard times. And, and actually, it's out of the brokenness and the hard times yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that we become. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. The, the mountains, the good times, the Miss America, it's all, it's all good. It's all good, but it didn't change me. Yeah. Hmm. But yeah. the hard times changed me. Mm, yeah. Well, I wanted to ask you about Orphan's Promise. What is like the vision? What is the vision for the future of Orphan's Promise? What is your hope? What is your dream for that? Well, my dream is millions of children. <laughs> of course. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I I think what my... Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> the we more I dab, energy. the more it comes. Yeah. <laughs> my dream is for children who have this orphan spirit. And, you know, you don't have to be an orphan to have an orphan spirit. That's very true. When you yeah. feel disconnected yeah. from belonging anywhere or being yeah. valued anywhere, you have that orphan spirit. I want people to know the Father heart of God. Mm -hmm. I want them to be healed children especially because they are they are our world they are the future yeah. and so left to their woundedness yeah. that affects all of us mm -hmm. in every nation in the world it doesn't matter where you live or where you're from so my hope would be to be able to uh, see kids get healed and to yeah. bring them just that word hope yeah. you know you can't put a price tag on it and when kids i i meet some kids that i just marvel at they have had nothing they are deeply wounded mm -hmm. but there's something in them that will not be denied mm -hmm. and you can pick them out you know and say wow. that one's going to be okay but then there are the ones who are over in the corner by themselves that yeah. need someone to come along and hug them and mentor them. And they're not going to get that in a government run orphanage. Yeah. So yeah. Um, they age out at 16. They don't know how to cook. They've never had money. Oh. They've, they've not been schooled properly. Mm -hmm. So our hope is to have these centers available where they can come. In some places we house kids. We don't have orphanages. If there's any housing involved, it's in a family mm -hmm. environment. That's kind of the new wave in orphan care is that there's, uh, you know, a parent, a mom, dad in the scenario, and they're learning what family is so they can become one yeah. someday. Yeah. So it's all about mentoring and, and loving and being patient and forgiving. Giving, yeah. <laughs> you know, and just Absolutely. just introducing them to the only one who can really fill the emptiness mm -hmm. inside of them. Well, two questions. If someone's watching this and they might feel like they might feel this burden, but also might feel a little overwhelmed, like I want to help, but I'm not sure how I can in yeah. practical ways. How can people help make a yeah. difference when it comes to orphans and adopting? And then how specifically can they support Orphans Promise? Well, let me start with the first question. Yeah. Um, I'm not discouraging people from adopting. Yeah. I am simply saying, know that love will not be enough. Mm -hmm. Your marriage and your family will be challenged mm -hmm. in the process of all of this. But if God calls you to it, mm -hmm. it's so rich. Don't yeah. run. Yeah. Run. Yeah. Run to it. 
Seconds. How could you give to Orphan's <laughs> Promise? It is so simple. <laughs> give to Orphan's Promise, yes. Orphanspromise.org. Yeah. Just come and find out about yeah. what we're doing. We have a wonderful website. Mm -hmm. And um, we just love for you to know about the work, and we'd love for you to participate with us. Because, you know, it's it's like the work we talk about here at CBN. Mm -hmm. One one person, one group of people can't do it. We have to all do it together. Amen. So, Amen. Yeah. Terry. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Uh, so many tears. Well, and I worked here a couple decades and knew, you know, a bit about your journey adopting the three girls from the yeah. Ukraine and then starting Orphan's Promise. But I never realized it, they were acts of obedience. It mm -hmm. wasn't just like, I'm going to do this. I yeah. want to do this. The Lord really touched your heart and you listened. Yeah. Yeah. And that obedience became more important after we took the first step, because sometimes when it gets rough, you start questioning, you know, mm -hmm. should I have done this? Did we do the right thing? But if we had not gone, Orphan's Promise would not be. And so wow. I thank the Lord. Oh. Yes, thank you, Jesus, for what Amen. he's done in your life and through Orphan's Promise. Amen. Yeah. yeah. Terry doesn't like people to <laughs> brag about it, but we are very grateful for you, Terry. Very, we really very are. Grateful. Thank yeah. you. I'm very grateful to be here. <laughs> well, Terry, we do thank you for being with us. And we want to thank our viewers for continuing to support Orphan's Promise. To find out more, you can also watch life changing stories and support Orphan's Promise. Visit their website, orphanspromise.org. In fact, if you join the 700 Club, a portion of your gift will support Orphan's Promise. It's just $20 a month to be a 700 Club member. That's 65 cents a day. So I encourage you to get on board with this. If you do, we will send you Gordon Robertson's latest teaching on the 23rd Psalm as our way of saying thank you. Again, call us at 800-700-7000 and just say, I'd like to join the 700 Club and support Orphan's Promise. Hey everyone, I'm Ashley Key. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so we can reach more people with encouraging content like you just watched and so you never miss a beat. See you next time and God bless.